Welcome to the YouTube series, How to Build Your Food Truck. And what you see behind me here is my food truck that I use, which is Rolling Burritos. And I show you exactly step by step how you can turn an empty trailer or a food truck into a full mobile kitchen on wheels, just like I did with mine right here. And I take you step by step on how to do that. Everything from the hood install to the window install, where you can just kind of like boop, pop it up and you're ready to rock and roll and serve your uh, food out of there or whatever your um, specialty is. So let me give you a recap on what I've been working on. The only thing about working outside that's a downfall is that you are dependent upon the weather. And out here in the Chicagoland area, it's getting a little bit cold, so we've been making the best of it. But let me give you an update of what we've been working on. Everything from a new hood, a new window, and uh, an update on the fire suppression system that we've been working on. So again, Frank Baltieres on how to build your food truck, step-by-step -step videos, any questions, drop them in the comments. Thank you for subscribing. Now let's get to it right away. Sometimes you have to get creative with your builds and something that I have to do different now is I cannot build another trailer with stainless steel all over the walls and the ceilings. This has stainless steel ceilings, it has stainless steel walls. If I would have known that the price of stainless steel was going to skyrocket as much as it did, I would not have built this one out of all stainless steel. I would have saved some of these pieces for something else. But what I have to do now is from this part, being this part of the hood right here, a seven foot hood, all the way to the other side, that has to be stainless steel. But the rest of it, I'm gonna use something else. Let me show you what I'm gonna use. I'm going to use this right here. This is FRP and it's the smooth FRP because there's two types of FRP. One that has all the little bumps and then this one that's nice and smooth. So everything else on all the walls and the ceiling and the trailer, get this FRP and then this is gonna be almost like a backing. I have used FRP before. Uh, the only reason I didn't like it maybe is because I didn't install it correctly. This has to go on, on the bottom of it almost like a like a backer because this is kinda, it is pretty flimsy, it's just plastic there. Well, FRP, uh, fiberglass reinforced plastic, I guess that's what it means, FRP. Uh, so that is the change that's going to happen. All right, let's walk in here and see the results of this fire suppression system installed. This is, that, again, the Husky coin gray flooring. So far, it has been really dependable. This is the tank that they installed on here. It's a Kitchen Knight PCL 300, and uh, it gets installed just like this. So this is the tank that has the special chemicals in case there's a fire here, and it goes all the way up here, that black gas pipe which goes right over here. And what they did different now on my food truck, the original one, they actually ran this on the outside like this. And I think they've gotten a little bit better on how they install these. Now they install them inside, which is really nice. Look at that clean install that they have right there. You guys can see there. So there's that part. And then here is like the pull station. So when you pull the pull station, it goes up right here to the control head. And then that controls over here, which is your fan. And then it sprays right in there. And what else we got? Oh, and then right here, it also shuts off the fuel shut off. So everything from here, it doesn't feed any more propane going towards the equipment because we're gonna install the flexible uh, three quarter inch propane lines right from the apparatus right there. But that's kind of how the install looks. I like to put the tank down here. I know a lot of people put the tanks up here. He even said the installer guy that some of them put them sideways. But I like mine down here. Keep a lower center of gravity because these things can get pretty heavy. So we keep it on here. The price of this is, uh, it used to be 2,500 bucks. Now it went up, it's about 2,800 right now for this system i put all this black piping in so that's not something they did they did everything from there up and the tank so there is that recap of the fire suppression system install so in all my old pieces of stainless steel that were in my garage i found this one it is one of the nastiest ones that i have but behind the cooking equipment you need stainless steel because the rest of the trailer i'm going to be using frp on this new build that i have that we're going to go quick I'm gonna keep repeating it. We're gonna go fast on this one because we don't wanna get caught in the cold weather. So I'm gonna cut all these ends off and try to see how I can manage to put this piece behind the cooking equipment. So let's get to it right away. 
This is all factory installed plywood, just so you know. I didn't modify any of the plywood that comes in here. And also, uh, I, am, I received my seven foot hood that's gonna go right here by hood mark. This time I had it delivered. I did not go pick it up because I got tired of driving to Ohio. And this time I actually ordered two hoods. So it's uh, cut down on shipping costs. So as I said, we're moving quick on this one. If you guys really put your head down and work, and do it daily, eight hours a day. You can have one built in about a month if you know exactly what materials to order. So with that, like I said, I'm just giving this a quick dusting on here just to get out any, any of the big debris out of here. And I'm about to go pick up, once again, the two seven foot hoods that just arrived today. I ordered them about 10 days ago from Hoodmark. Really good people out there, really good product. And we're gonna be installing that probably in the next couple days because I'm kind of skipping around. Depending on what condition and what kind of trailer or truck you bought, there comes a demo side to this where you have to kind of destroy your walls a little bit to make them better. On this one, we're gonna use that groove right down the middle. It's about 48 inches from the floor. And that's where we're gonna run our Romex inside there, which is gonna give us a nice finish on our walls. That way we don't have any um, conduit, electrical conduit on the outside. And it's a nice clean, finish so a little bit of demo so here to we make are it look better down ready to pick up the two seven foot hoods at this place over here somewhere in uh, the city of chicago ridge i had it shipped this time around instead of going out to elyria ohio to come over here to pick it up so let's go see where they're at and how we get a hold of these cats so let's walk in so here they are my two seven foot hoods and then the little fan things right up top right there i'm gonna forklift them out or take them out towards the trailer and then we'll take them home install them today or tomorrow ah, no sorry saturday saturday because the weather has been really nice so i'm going to take advantage of it and install them saturday here it is the delivery of the hoods they fit all perfectly in a 7x16 trailer they got we got hood number one with the little mushroom tops right there and then we got hood number two two seven footers in this trailer on there some extra little filters right over there fit perfectly once again in a seven by 16 trailer this is almost like finding money in your garage i believe a sheet of stainless steel 304 20 gauge is about 400 to 500 dollars a sheet so it's like i found 500 dollars in my garage and uh, i put it inside the trailer it's a little bit on the heavy side so make sure that uh, you brace up for the weight Half the time that it takes to install the stainless steel is taking off the protective film that comes on top of it. It's a good thing that we don't have to do it on the rest of the trailer since we are using FRP. And all this other stainless steel, I found it from like little scraps that were left over from the other truck that I had built. Woo! So there we go. After searching and looking around for pieces that could fit here so I wouldn't have to buy brand new stainless steel, I found all these sheets in my garage. And I had some of these uh, leftover trim pieces as well. The transition pieces that make it look real nice. But once we get this all cleaned up, that's what I like about stainless steel. It's so easy to clean, kind of. If you get the right cleaner, you got to scrub a little bit. But uh, it's not that bad to clean and it's going to look out real nice. So there is what's going to go behind the hood. And we're going to install that hood tomorrow. A seven foot hood. I just wanted to get this back there because it is necessary to have behind the cooking equipment so that's how we look on there i scrapped together some stainless steel sheets made it look real nice with the transition pieces looks very professional <laughs> so all right that's it let me run the electrical cable right now just because it's really nice outside and it's still got a little bit of daylight left depending on where you're located it could be a little bit more financially uh, beneficial to be able to drive out and pick up the concession window and from jr aluminum and the hood from hood mart at the same time that way you kill two birds with one stone on this particular cut you just want to make sure that you get in between your studs in your ceiling so just measure from either left to right left right to left and make sure that you're inside that bay and that's pretty much all you have to do on this measurement. after you cut out that top part that i just showed you on the hyperlapse which is right there for the vent that goes outside the next part is you use these zip walls and these I said it once and I'll say it again, are so handy. <laughs> One of the best purchases that I've done. Now you can put the 
hood up as a dry fit and you can kind of maneuver it as much as you want. This one is gonna have to come out just a hair because I have to fit a two by four right here sideways. So it's gonna be flat. So an inch and a half gap from here to there. But that's exactly how we did it. Ah, the hood is not in place 100%. It's just up there held up by these zip walls, just so you know. But I wanted to get it off the floor, get it on top, because tomorrow I'm installing this because the weather has been really nice here in Chicago. As I say it again, because we're in about mid-November, beginning of November, and it can just switch in the blink of an eye. So I want to do all the outside stuff really fast, really quick, and that's part of it. And then the concession window is also part of it, and that should be here maybe in the next week or so. But that's as much as we have done so far. Good progress. And I'm about to pull up the, the power cable, which is right there. You can see it, it's right there. I'm gonna swing that up so we can feed the electrical panel right here. Walking into my local Ace Hardware here because if you remember on my other hood install, I bought some washers that were monsters. They were like five inches in diameter. And I need, no, I need those for installing the hood and securing it. And the only place that I found it was my local Ace Hardware store. So that's where I'm headed now. Just know that this washer, it's a galvanized. And then I'm going to use one more on the outside, which is about five inches from left to right. So what I'm working on now is I'm, I'm on top of the trailer. And, and I'm drilling the support holes for my bolts for my hood. Oh, and I got to come up through the top right here. And then this is a wide. It's actually two and a half inches, not five, as I mentioned. So I put that down. And then I put my other galvanized washer right here. And then I put my galvanized nut. And then that'll hold up the hood until we uh, secure it 100%. But for now, this will do the trick. That way we can take the, the poles out of there, the zip walls, and that'll do it. So there we go. That's that. Let's do the rest. We got five of them to do. This is part of the, the hood combo kit that comes from Hood Mart. As you can see, it's a seven foot hood that I put right up top right there. And this is kind of like the vent that goes out to that little mushroom top. So that's what I'm cutting right now uh, because they just give you a piece that's about 12 inches in height. So you need to cut it every single time. So that's what I'm doing now. It's about four inches. And then we measure it. And another option that they give you a hood mark is you're able to buy it with a fire suppression system installed. And actually they're installing a fire suppression system right now as we speak. But that one's after the fact. So you can do it before, you can do it after. And actually okay, he just passed by, he's gonna fix some of the piping on my hood. Because what they used to do is they used to put the, the fire suppression, the gas pipes, in the front of the hood. And now he has a way that he can kind of hide it in the back. So he's gonna change the ones on mine because I got it, what, two, two and a half years ago. So now they do it a little bit different, which is pretty cool. So with that, let me finish cutting this up. This is that duct that goes out to the mushroom top from the hood that you have to cut from the inside. So just know that this is that part. I'll put a link here in the description for my paid Amazon links. Make sure that you buy the 25 pack of these metal cutoff wheels because you go through them really, really quick. And then they give you this other part here on the kit. As I have mentioned on my previous videos, just want to recap it. And then you have to mark it from the inside. You can hear that little scratching. Uh, we're marking it. So then we're going to cut this hole and then put the little mushroom top right up here, the exhaust fan. But uh, we have to cut this out first. It's like a plate that will go around the entire cavity. Let me show you once he's done marking inside. As you can see right here, you can see that it has like openings to the bottom, to the top, to the sides. And this kind of gives it a nice little cover on there. And then the other thing goes right on top. So that's how that looks. This one is four inches. That's the length that I used on that vent that comes down. I like to do a fifth hole right back here. So then that way this little exhausting doesn't just like pop up one day. So we have one right there, another one right there, that's three, four, and then one should be popping up right here any second now. Let's see where it is. 
Hijo de la, están bien cerquitas. Hey. Está bien así, ya ni modo, dale. Hay que make it work, ya dale. Le queda, boom. Peekaboo. Lo dijiste ahí. Alright, let's put this up right now. Here's that new exhaust fan, how it comes boxed in. They do a real good job packaging for sure. I mean, a lot of stuff doesn't usually come damaged when they ship it out to you. This one, I had it shipped from Ohio. Let's open it up, but it should be all in good condition. So there we go. I have my 6.3, uh, they call it six gauge, three conductor. You see there, it's only for 120 power, being the power, the neutral, and the ground. It's called SOOW cable. I ordered a roll of 25 feet. I actually found it on Amazon, and believe it or not, it was cheaper on Amazon than my local electrical supply house believe it that's crazy um so but it still was expensive it was about 90 some bucks just so you know 25 feet of 63 gauge wire so right, let me show you what i have going down down here this is the bottom of the trailer as you can see those are the wheels right there the trailer this is that power cable and something that i did different on this one that i like actually is i put these insulated right here look they're called insulated cable clamps three quarter and i put it right there i put another one back there i'm gonna add one more towards the front over there man these things are really nice they're made out of metal and they have an insulation insulation right there out of rubber so it keeps a nice steady hold on the power cable right here and i run my power cable all the way to the back of the trailer just because i do not like having the electrical box next to the water in the front that's kind of like the feedback that i get like why'd you not put it in the front and that's exactly the reason and this is where we come up inside the trailer right there we're gonna go fishing for wire you're gonna need almost like a guide wire to be able to pull that cable from the bottom up because most likely you'll not be able to uh, push it up by itself so you need a little guide wire again thank you for watching the channel frank baltieres on how to build your food truck